Hi, and welcome to this quick introduction of Obsidian Excalibur 1.6.17. I've added a couple of new features and I'd like to show you how they work. So first of all, the feature to embed Markdown documents has been available in Excalibur for quite some time. But what is new is I've added a default style sheet to these embeds. So now if you open up your file explorer and you choose a document to embed, you can drag the document over here. On Windows, you need to press the control button. On Mac, you need to hold down the shift and drop the document. And with that, you have the embedded markdown document here. But what's new here is the styling. And so I have this example here that shows you that this is how a table looks like a code block and the block code and all of these show up with a nice style in your drawing. I also have this front matter tag here and I can change the color of the border color or I can leave it empty and then there's not going to be a border. Uh, I can set this, for example, to black. And then when I navigate back to my drawing, then you can see that the border of this uh, markdown embed is black. Of course, all the settings here uh, in Excolidra for the markdown embed settings, they are still all working. So you can specify your own CSS file. There's a new setting. You can specify a default border color, which in this case is orange red. So again, if I open this up and I delete the front matter completely like this, and I close this, then it will take a second and you will see that the border color changed to orange red. So the next new feature or the next two features that I'm going to show you are developments by the Excolidra team. So one is the five custom colors from the drawing. So in this case, my palette is larger than the standard Obsidian palette. So this looks a bit more crowded, but so let me show you that here, this is my normal palette, but at the bottom of the palette, you can see used on canvas and here you will see the five most recently used colors from your canvas. And this is great when you create custom colors and you want to reuse it. Uh, this is a very good, easy access to those colors. The other new feature is the vertical text alignment and you can see the demonstration here. Simply you can click here to center vertically or to, send, to align to the bottom or to align to the top. And so when you have a sticky node, then you can now uh, set up the vertical alignment as well. I did some enhancement on how the links are handled. And so one of the nice new features is that when you open up Obsidian Search and there's a search result that is an Excolidra drawing. If I click on this search result, then it will open my drawing, highlighting the piece of text that was found in search. And this makes it much easier to find the text that you searched for instead of finding a busy page and trying to find where that piece of text is. Also, the same feature lets you reference elements within a drawing and you have two ways of referencing elements on a drawing. One is to reference it using a section heading. And in this case, you can create a section heading by using hashtag, or actually you could have multiple hashtags here as well. But in this case, I just had one. So this is my heading one called fixed. And then I can simply reference this item on my drawing like this. So you can see this is a double brackets hashtag and it's the name of the heading. And when I click this, then I'm navigated to the part of the drawing that has this header. The other way to reference items is to reference their unique reference ID. And the way this works, so you can see here this example that this item here has a link and that link 
is to a reference ID. And if I click this, then this image is shown. Now, how do you get the reference ID? I created a new function to the tools palette and it's this button, copy markdown link for selected element to clipboard. And so here, if I have, for example, this uh, rectangle and then I click on this button, I can give an alias to this. So this is my, this is my rectangle. And with that, I have a link ready on my clipboard. And if I double click here and paste and then click, oops, if I paste and then click, yes, so I was in uh, preview mode or in raw mode. So if I paste, then I have my a link here to the rectangle and if I click the rectangle then the rectangle is shown. The limitation here at the moment is you need to have a single element selected. Uh, so if you have multiple elements selected, so say for example this is actually uh, I think a group of elements. Yes indeed it's a group of elements. If I click the action on this then I will get a message to select a single element in the scene. Maybe in the future I'm going to make this work such that you can select a group as well. Right now if you want to link to a group you can either select an element from the group or uh, you can add a rectangle around the element like this. Well not exactly like this but let me just show you. I'll make the color of this transparent as well as I'm going to make the stroke color transparent. So now I have a transparent rectangle here. And if I click this transparent rectangle and copy the link, I'm not going to, well, this is going to be my link. So that's going to be my alias. And then if I, yeah, now I have a transparent stroke color. Now if I paste it right here, then you can see that I have this link and if I click the link then it will uh, zoom into that item because it's going to zoom around the invisible rectangle. But again hopefully in the near future I'm going to add a, an additional feature that you can zoom to a group of elements. And then finally I've made some fixes. I won't go into the details. One of the issues was that when you had a um, free draw element that was uh, that had a background color then in SVG exports the color disappeared. Now uh, it is working okay. The other is handling links in uh, raw mode and that is why uh, my drawing was in raw mode in the beginning and I was actually uh, surprised or caught off guard during the demonstration. And then there's a couple of other things like some small issues with saving the canvas. So for example, when you change the background color and there were some other edge cases, then the canvas didn't recognize that it needs to save. So the disk didn't turn red. And finally, I've made some improvements on Excolitro Automate sticky note text wrapping as well. So in a nutshell, that is all that is new in Excolitro Obsidian 1.6.17. Uh, I hope uh, you will enjoy using it and as always please let me know on GitHub if something is not working as expected or if you have a new idea and you'd like me to work on that. Thank you.